Hi everybody, my name's John Meyer and joining me today is Mike Thompson, who's a Senior Product Manager at AMD. Mike, thanks so much for joining me. John, thanks for having me, appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, of course. So Mike, what brings AMD and you to the New York Summit this week? Well, there's a couple things. On a personal level, I've spent quite a while on the West Coast. And so personally, I wanted to come to New York for the bagels and the pizza. But... <laughs> well, great, all right, let's go grab some. <laughs> yeah, but a close second, maybe a 1B if my boss is listening, uh, is to come to talk to the public cloud user community about why AMD has had such success in the cloud over the last five or so years. And really that boils down to two things, faster performance at lower cost or more compute capacity at the same cost. So I've got two sessions that delve into that. One is a general purpose, why AMD in the public cloud, particularly at AWS, and the other one focuses more on the applications that the financial sector needs out of the public cloud. So two sessions. Well, Mike, can you tell us a little bit more about the partnership between AMD and AWS? Yeah, it's a pretty tight collaboration. We're working together on a daily basis. Um, some of the latest and greatest is we've got worldwide coverage across a broad variety of instances. I think we have 15 different instance types uh, deployed at AWS with broad global availability. Uh, AWS is a leading edge adopter of AMD's fourth generation Epic processor, we call it Genoa. Uh, the general purpose M7A instances previewed last month in June, and I'm optimistic that more instances will be adopting Genoa soon. Um, something that AWS EMR team, the Elastic MapReduce team, has done, have done recently with AMD Epic processors was to use Epic in order to improve EMR Spark price performance by 50%. Same job, nice. half the cost, or same cost, double the work. Mike, can you tell, help me understand, why do you think like AMD is probably the lesser known out of some of the other semiconductor companies? So why would that be? I think a lot of it comes down to people just are habitual creatures, and a lot of cloud users don't actually think about the processor that they're running on. That's not a choice that's actually made in their buying decision, which can be a big mistake. Uh, with AMD processors, AMD Epic processors, you get higher performance and lower retail costs. And so that can end up being a costly uh, lack of choice in the customer's buying decision. Mike, I can tell you my experience going way back in time, and I won't date myself, is that we always thought about the processors when we were building computers, when we were building servers in the data center. But now when you're in the cloud, I don't think processors really thought about it in the you know sense that I'm going to put this in there and my performance is going to increase and go X. I usually look at the number of cores or you know the performance in some instances and aspects. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think you really hit the nail on the head there, John. I think that's absolutely the way it goes. Uh, a lot of users have other things to worry about, some deadlines to hit or whatever, but there are some significant benefits that come from actually choosing the right processor from price performance to security, particularly with AMD Epic processors where we have, where we have a security processor built in can make a real difference. Mike, let me ask you, why should customers or consumers run their workloads on AMD processors though? Well, there's three main reasons. There's getting more compute or more capacity for lower cost, uh, or there's increasing capacity at the same cost. Lots of customers have constrained budgets, which are either reducing, or maybe they don't have the room to fund some new kind of initiative or new kind of applications. If they migrate their applications to AMD, they can free up some budget in order to go invest that into capacity expansion or new applications. And then on top of that, like we just discussed, there's the aspect of security. And with AMD Infinity Guard and particularly SEV SNP, which provides the ability to protect data in use, there's some real differentiators there. Some customers uh, need it, Everybody should use it because of the you know, global security situation that we're in today, and other customers absolutely require it. So those are three of the main reasons. All right, Mike, as I wrap this up, what's on AMD's roadmap that you want to share with the listeners? Yep. First of all, it, our next generation, uh, fourth generation Epic processor, we call this Genoa, has recently been previewed by AWS. This is the general purpose instance. It's called M7A that previewed in June. We're looking forward to that being generally available. In addition to the CPUs, there's also GPUs from AMD. MI300X, I believe, will be a real game changer, particularly for generative AI, which is generating all the buzz these days. It's got a ton of integrated HBM3, which 
uh, brings the data very close to the accelerator itself. And that's helped solve one of the key challenges of those very data intensive types of applications where data movement is the application killer. So by bringing all of that HBM memory integrated in the chip immediately adjacent uh, to the GPU itself, uh, it should make a real difference for those applications. Mike, nice. I'm looking forward to what's next for AMD and the learning more information at your sessions that are actually happening here at the AWS New York Summit. Yep. All right, everybody. Mike Thompson, Senior Product Manager at AMD here at the AWS New York Summit. My name's John Meyer. Mike, thank you so much for joining me. Nice to chat with you, John. All right. See you later. See you later.